Hey boys and girls, this is another reminder, another review today. Hope you're doing well today. And hopefully this is another day that you're watching when I'm making a video because I keep making videos on the same day. So you keep seeing me in the same clothes, with the same face, with no makeup, and in the same room. So, um, but I want you, hopefully you're looking at this at a different day. And um, I want to take this an opportunity to remind us of our instrument families. We did talk about those this year. So let's just do some reminders. Let's start off with the brass family. Okay, so in the brass family, those are our metal instruments, but not all, not all metal instruments are brass, so you have to be careful. But what's very significant about a brass instrument is the mouthpiece and the way that you have to blow. You have to, you have to buzz your lips to, to, to do a brass instrument. So, an instrument that you might find in the brass family would be the trumpet, a tuba, the French horn, and the trombone. Now, there are variations of these different instruments. There's some that are bigger, some that are smaller. There's you have the flugelhorn, you have the sousaphones, you have some other things that are in the brass family, but these are just the basic four that we talk about in class. So just keep that in mind that there actually are more brass instruments that are listed right here. The next family is the woodwind family. The woodwind families um, are, uh, they are played with a reed, a little, little piece of wood. In fact, I think I might have a reed. Let me see here. Yes, I do. I have some reeds here. These are clarinet reeds. You can buy them in a box when you have to go, and they cost a lot of money. So you have to be very careful with them. This is a reed. Okay, it's just, it's made out of bamboo. And it's very thin. Saxophones have these kind of reeds. Um, and bass clarinets, um, baritone saxophones, tenor saxophones, alto sopra saxophones, soprano saxophones, they all have these kind of mouthpieces. This is called a reed. This is a single reed. What I don't have a picture of is what's called a double reed. A double reed is two pieces of wood put together um, and you blow into the wood itself and it hooks into the instrument. So. So woodwind families, saxophone. This one's made of metal, but it is a woodwind. It has all those little fingers and holes and buttons. We have to use all of our fingers to be able to play, to play the saxophone. Plus it has a reed, which is the wood part. And we just blow air into the saxophone. And you have to blow a lot of air in order to make those saxophones sound. And they're kind of squeaky and squilly when you're first learning how to play them. Now this is called a bassoon. This is what I played when I was in when I was in high school and junior high. This was one of my favorite instruments because it's low sounding. This is um, a bassoon. It's it also is a woodwind. It's made of wood, and it's this little spout that comes out there. Well, right at the end of that little spout, you put a double reed. This is a double reed instrument. So you would be putting those two pieces of wood and buzzing into that instead of using a reed and putting the the actual instrument itself in your mouth. But this one also uses all of your fingers. And left hand goes on top, and bottom hand, right hand goes on the bottom, just like a saxophone, just like a flute, just like a recorder. Every time I teach you, left hand on top, right hand on, on the bottom. Here's a clarinet. I just showed you what a clarinet reed looks like. And it is also a woodwind, and it goes left hand on top, right hand on the bottom, and you have all those little keys and buttons you gotta push. And here's the flute. Now, the flute was originally made of wood, but it is, it, is, it is made of metal now. It does not have a reed, but this right here, this little area here, it's kind of like um, if you had a Coke bottle or a, a pop bottle and you were to blow over the top of the pop bottle and it would make a noise. That's kind of like what you, what you do with a flute. You roll your lip just a little bit and you blow across that hole and it makes a sound. It too has a lot of buttons and keys to push. Left hand on top, right hand on the bottom. Same way for all woodwind instruments. Here's the oboe. It looks a lot like the clarinet, so be, be careful when you're trying to identify an oboe and a clarinet. 
an oboe is, a, is smaller than a clarinet, but also look right here at the mouthpiece. It is a double reed instrument. You don't put any of the actual instrument into your mouth. You put the wood into your mouth. And there's cork at the end of the two pieces of wood and that cork slides right into the instrument and you play an oboe. The oboe makes kind of a honky sound like when you were, when we watched Peter and the Wolf and it had the, the duck as that honk honk sound. It's, a, it's an interesting instrument. It's, it's probably one of my least favorites, but it's, it is a beautiful instrument when it's played right and it can have a beautiful sound. But um, that is the oboe, and it is a double reed. So bassoon, oboe are your double reed instruments. And then let's talk about the percussion family. That's our favorite percussion. You should know what percussion is because my whole room is full of percussion instruments. So here's just a few examples of percussion. Percussion is anything you can shake, scrape, tap, um, rattle, anything that you can shake, tape, shake, scrape, tap. And so this would be a kibasa. You would hold it with one hand and you would turn it and the beads would shake against that metal piece that's underneath it. So that is called a kibasa. These are bongos. Of course, these are drums. There's a low drum and there's a high drum and they're connected together. This is the timpani. Some people will call them kettle drums. And usually you'll see them in groups of three when you're watching orchestra. And each timpani drum is tuned to a different kind of pitch. There might be a high sound, a medium sound, and a low sound. So this would be timpani. And once again, you would, you would drum these with a mallet. These are claves. These are the big wooden sticks that we use to... Um, that we, and I know we've used claves and a lot of different things, especially if you were in the drum club, we use it. It has a nice wood sound. Um, so these, those are claves and you just hit the wood against the wood and you have a certain way you have to hold them. You hold them like it's a boat and you hold them on top of each other and tap and they make wood sounds. And then the last family that we're gonna talk about is the string family. It's hard to do um, string families in our classroom because we don't really see viol violins and violas and string basses. But what we have in our classroom is we've had, I've, I've shown you a banjo, we have guitars, we have ukuleles, um, I've shown you a mandolin, um, I've shown you a harpsichord. So those are all things that are different stringed instruments. Um, but I have not been able to show you these these instruments here this here is the double bass this is the biggest of the stringed instruments you have to stand to be able to play this one and it's very low sounding it's one of my favorites the next one is the cello and if you look down here here's a little peg down here and that sits on the floor and you have to sit to play the cello and you just kind of put it between your legs and you use the bow and you strum over the strings and this right here is the bow that goes over the strings. And with strings, you can either bow them or you can do what's called a pizzicato where you can pick the strings. This is a viola. This and this, they look very similar. This is the violin and this is the viola. They look almost the exact same except the viola is slightly bigger than the violin. They're both played the same way. You put them under your chin and you, and you play with your left hand holding the strings and your right hand does the bow or you can do a pizzicato. And, and so those are our different stringed instruments. And so, and there are different, actually, there's actually a lot of different stringed instruments, the sitars and stuff like that, that are different world instruments that I have not talked about, but you can always go on Google and, or on to YouTube and um, search for different kinds of string instruments. There's there's an awesome string instrument that this, this one guy has. It's huge. It's got a lot of strings. It's, it's just way cool. So go online, search it out. Search out different string instruments and find some that, that I have not shown you today or we've talked about in class. So um, hopefully that gets you your gears reminded about uh, your uh, instrument families and hopefully that gets you thinking about what you might want to do especially fifth graders if you want to be in band or orchestra uh, guitar we do guitar um, I know some of the, the, uh, uh, the elementary schools uh, the um, um, junior high schools do ukuleles 
or ukulele, some would say. Um, and so those are all these different kinds of things to think about when you play. But don't forget that you can also sing. So you can be a choir. I was a part of choir too. Singing is just as important. But these are all things that we can do um, when you get to junior high. So be thinking about those things and take an opportunity and go online and go to YouTube and listen to the sounds of the instruments and so that you know how they sound. I know we've played the different sounds in the classroom and we've had to identify them. But in case you forget, just go on, Google it, listen to it, figure it out. And again, just because you're so awesome, I need to give you another high five. But where'd my high five? Oh, high five. Way to go, boys and girls. I'm happy for you.